Hey there, good morning. Well, it's morning for me. Uh, time to move the chickens. First thing we gotta do is uh, disconnect the fence here. It's already turned off, obviously. And then uh, move the fence, at least part of the fence. And then um, get move the, the chickens, close them up, and then uh, open them up. But So first thing here with the fence, I just have it tied to the corner post here. And when you pop these out, there is a little bit of a technique which makes it easier. Um, when you're bunching it, I gotta work backwards, sorry. You pull the post up and then you set the net like this. And that way it droops down. Just like that. And when you just keep going around, it'll unravel just as easily. So the key to it is really have a system and be consistent with it so that you don't get it tangled up. Because once you get the fence all tangled up, man, not fun. So I got, uh, this is 100 feet of fence and I'm gonna lay it out in the new section. And I do it just the opposite way. And uh, I lay it out and then I'll stand it up. So let's get that going. See, got it tangled up. There we go. So I laid out one section of that fencing and now it's clear so I'm going to pull the chickens across, put them there and then set the fence back up. So it never quite meets up at the back corner. So what I usually do is I start in one corner and work both sides and then figure it out when I get to the end. Or if you don't care about using all the fence, you can just overlap a little bit. Chickens are moved, fence is up, fence is not turned on yet, and I probably have to tighten it up in a few spots, but it's looking pretty solid. Uh, it's always a little bit of finagling in the corner there to get it right, but let's let up the chickens. Chickens are out, foraging. Some of them are going for the feed, but a lot of them are just cruising around eating crops and lettuce and other stuff that's out here. There's a lot of lettuce out here, but it's really in rough shape. It's really, I don't think it would taste very good, so. It is gonna get used. Uh, the chickens will eat it. I'll cut back on their feed for a couple days just because there's plenty for them, to, uh, for them to eat out here and to forage. And Larry is very happy to have a salad bar, basically. Uh, all right, so just tighten up the fence and do that other stuff in the chick shop. So we we'll get to that. So I made a lot of videos about chickens. And if you wanna see the video where I really go through all the details about all the gear that I use right now, uh, I'll put a link up here for that video, but I'll also put a link for a, a playlist at the end that has all the chicken videos that I made. And Now's as good a time as any to, uh, to replace the straw and the nest boxes. Um, this is not my favorite nest uh, egg box collection system, but it is very simple and cheap, and it has worked a lot. Um, I had an automatic like rollaway nest box in my bigger coop, but when I got rid of most of the chickens, went back to the smaller coop, we have these, these egg crates. So uh, you can see they're empty. Uh, I'm gonna go put some straw in them. So this straw is pretty fine. It, most of it's just gonna fall through anyways, but I'll give it a shot for, um, for right now. 
that's pretty much all I got. As I said, not a perfect system, but it does work. I've been putting, pretty much putting no straw in here for a while just because I've been lazy, but um, I'm getting a few broken eggs and stuff. And so let's get this. If it falls through, whatever. It's a straw, it'll break down. Maybe you guys will use more than one box now. No, probably not. Probably all use the same box. While I'm out here checking everything, I'm also going to check on other things inside the, the straw. So I'm just checking on the oyster shells and the grit. So I have that as uh, free choice for them in here. And uh, it's still got some in there. So I'll leave that for now. But uh, just wanted to check while I'm out here doing all this that they have what they need. Uh, we only have 15 chickens out here. So uh, they're really not going through as much as I'm used to when we had a whole bunch. So really, uh, really low maintenance. Um, I'll put this back to you in a second. But you know, I'm just really curious how long it's gonna take them to clear this out. It might take them a few months, we'll see. Um, there's only 15 chickens and one goose, and this is quite a bit of space, so no rush here. Uh, I can always uh, keep mowing the grass like I did in the last video. Um, so I'm gonna go uh, make sure everything's tidied up, and then I'm gonna go in and have some coffee and some breakfast. Well, it's the afternoon. Um, I did go make breakfast, and I did a bunch of other work out here. I started working on some more stuff in the tunnel, which I wasn't filming. Uh, I was also on the phone for a little while, just touching some base with friends, um, seeing how everyone's doing, and seeing how they're handling things. Um, it just feels kind of heavy. It feels like you just can't get away from the current situation. I feel like you're just constantly sort of thinking about it. And I assume a lot of you guys are in that situation as well. Let me know, guys. Down, let me know in the comments down below what you guys have been doing to, uh, to keep your mind off of things for a little while. I think it's good for our mental health to take a break once in a while. Um, but anyways, uh, I did think about prepping more beds out here to grow food uh, for our family and our, and our neighbors and stuff like that. But I, then I thought about it and... The more stuff I plant here, the more I'm going to be, my energy is going to be focused uh, away from Raleigh City Farm and I want to try to grow as much food as there as possible because I think I can grow more food there than I can here just because I have help there. And so um, I think that makes more sense for me and I try to grow as much food as I can right now for the community. And so as I said before, I'm going to be prepping uh, this area here for uh, for just planting grass uh, for, for rotationally grazing of birds and just have a back, big backyard and turn this more of an, more into a suburban house, I guess. Um, but this is really chunky. Uh, there's Because there were beds here, there's kind of mounds in places and there's big places where chickens were digging holes and stuff. So I'm gonna try to level that out uh, with the tilter and then a rake. I don't know how effective the tilter is gonna be, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So you can see up above here, this is sort of the area that I am um, you know, prepping out here and turning back into uh, grass and you can see the area where the chickens, uh, I just put them there this morning and you know, they got a lot of work to do but you can see, you know, where the farm, if you guys have watched videos before, you'll see where the, uh, where the field blocks were and stuff and uh, we'll turn this back to grass. So yeah, let me get on to uh, trying to get this uh, nice and smoothed out as much as possible so that I can plant some grass. Well, I only have two uh, big batteries for the uh, for my drill, so um, those are dead right now. So I'm gonna get to raking. Uh, my big rake is at Raleigh City Farm, so yeah, we don't have, really have a lot of tools there, and so I've been sort of lending my tools there because I have them, and you know I'm not using them too much here. But hopefully we'll get those replaced so I can get some of those back here. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna rake this smooth. Um, I the tilter actually worked pretty well, and I think it was a mixture of uh, pulling backwards to really have it dig in, and then um, pushing it forwards with the blade pushed down and that'll push the dirt forward. So a combination of that was really helpful. So we're gonna get this raked out. So for a lot of you guys that may have been following this channel, I don't know, it might be sad or whatever. 
to see uh, to see me sort of erase the farm here, but you know what? We're not moving. We do own our property, and we can always turn this back into beds if we want to. So, you know, I know how to do this. We have chickens. We can go back the other direction, but for now, this is what makes sense. Remember that these things aren't permanent. We can we can always make things how we want. Well, after a few more batteries and a bunch of experimentation, I think I got a little bit of a technique now that's, uh, that's working. Again, this is not what this tool is used for you normally, but when you're uh, trying to get stuff done, sometimes you just gotta make do with what you have, right? Um, so if you are pulling it backwards, which is not the normal, usually you push it forwards, uh, and you push the handles up, it'll dig in more. And if you're pulling back as you're digging in more, it will grind up a little bit more. And then if you push, going forwards and you put it down this way, that back edge will push a bunch of dirt forward. So a combination of those seems to be working um, pretty well. And again, this would probably not work for like normal ground, but these are beds, so the soil is nice and soft. So let me show you. Not bad, right? You get back to work. Well, that battery wasn't even fully charged, but another dead battery. I'm gonna do some raking and then uh, wait for another battery to charge and hopefully I can finish up this job. Got everything as level as I'm gonna today. Um, kind of running out of time this afternoon. And uh, so I'm gonna put down some grass seed. Uh, this is like a contractor mix. It's a mix mixture of fescue and some annual rye. Uh, it should establish pretty quickly. Most people grow either fescue or Bermuda around here. So, uh, and it, yeah, it's cool. The annual rye germinates a little bit faster and just sort of fills in a little bit. So um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna put down. It's usually just the sort of the go-to. And uh, we have a mixture of so many different kinds of grasses out here. So hopefully eventually maybe I can overgraze some other areas and then reseed with this and maybe get a little more uniform. Maybe not, whatever. So I'm gonna spread this out, uh, rake it in real lightly, and then uh, it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow. So it should be good. Well, that felt really good to uh, get that all leveled out and get it seeded. It's something I've really been looking forward to doing since I've decided to close the farm. Uh, I'm really a big fan of just like making decisions and moving on to the next thing. And so uh, it does feel really good. All got seeded and covered and hopefully the forecast is right and it does rain tonight and tomorrow. That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, just another day out here. I didn't spend all day working, um, but I just wanted to show you what I'm up to and staying busy and I just, uh, taking some time to really feel um, grateful, trying to feel positive about the good things going on right now. Um, I feel very lucky and, and I said grateful to live in a place like this where we have space outside and we can grow food and have animals and um, the weather's been great so we've been able to be outside a lot right now. And I know a lot of you guys aren't in places where that's necessarily possible. You're either in a city or somewhere where it's more confined or there's more restrictions and I understand that. And um, I, it's tough and I know you guys are going through a lot right now, but if you watched my video yesterday Try to work on stuff that you've been neglecting maybe um, if it's projects around your house if it's um, You know anything like that or maybe spending more time with your kids uh, your kids are home Maybe you're home from work right now. You're probably definitely home from work right now um, You know try to put in some quality time with your family and enjoy that and uh, Try not to focus on all the the heavy heavy stuff going on out there right now. And um, as I said before, let me know down below uh, what you guys have been doing to keep your mind off of things and um, keep you guys yourselves in good spirits. Uh, make sure you guys are uh, eating well, trying to get a little bit of physical activity is always really good if you can in any way. It makes, your, uh, makes you rest a little bit easier and uh, it's good for your soul. So hope you've been enjoying these videos. It's been fun so far. Um, yeah, 
uh, hopefully it's uh, helping too. So uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and hit the little bell. That way you know when I put out a new video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.